Okay, so hello, uh, my name is Mitri and today I'm going to tell you about uh, a paper on ICML workshop for non-concept optimization about applying uh, manifold uh, sampling for learning tree estimation. The problem with this paper is that uh, the authors uh, spent a lot of time uh, by developing their own optimization algorithm, but for this workshop they just say, oh, well, we have this algorithm, we have this problem, let's apply this algorithm for this problem. And it is very difficult uh, to like understand what ha what uh, really going on here. So uh, I've take a look at the previous paper. So I will start with optimization technique, and we will going to solve these problems. Uh, this problem consists uh, of uh, three parts. Uh, this function is smooth function with no derivative. You can imagine that this is like the best function possible. You want to you want to find like uh, the gradient, you can find it. And this gradient will be like uh, continuous and like perfect. Uh, the second part, part is this function f at x. Uh, this function is mapping uh, from initial space to some probably higher dimensional uh, space RP. And this function is also very good, very like smooth and have good der derivative, derivatives. Uh, and finally, we have the function uh, ash. This, this function h uh, has problems because we assume that this function is piecewise linear. So despite the fact that it is continuous uh, in, in some points of uh, in some points of x, in some points x, this function don't have uh, like good gradient, and this could cause lots of problems. So let's take a look at this function. What is like what does look like? So in order to make this continuous piecewise linear function, we uh, want like First of all, we want that this function will be continuous. Well, obviously. Second, we have a set of affine function, which is basically like a function of style, a scalar product of some vector a and vector x, x plus some constant b. And for each point z, there is some function from this, from this set, which give us value in point z. In addition, we add some notation. So first of all, uh, SI. What we're basically we're saying here, we select one specific function in this set and this SI is basically a, a subset where an active function is function uh, HI. And in addition we also take interior and closure. Uh, you can so later I will show you that at one point uh, it's possible to have several functions be active. So we have like not only one function, uh, one linear function, but uh, it's like several functions like uh, combined together in one point. And uh, the indices of this function uh, are labeled as i, uh, e, h. Uh, and in addition the set of active functions like function itself will be labeled as uh, h big. So uh, let's take a look. The simple example is that, like one of the simplest examples will be uh, L1 norm. In L1 norm, we can uh, parameterize it and uh, present it as the uh, set of eight different uh, linear function. So if we have, uh, if we are like in positive uh, octant, we have this function. If uh, x3 is less than zero, then this will be this function and etc. So, uh, also let's notice that for every x which is in this positive orthod, only one uh, function is active, this function. In case if x3 is equal to zero, there is two functions which are active in this point. This is this function and this function. Uh, and similar if we have uh, this point uh, equal to zero, like all these four functions will be active. And finally, if uh, we are in the point zero, in, like in the current current origin, all these function, uh, all these like linear function are active. So, let's move further. Uh, in general, this function, uh, the, this uh, piecewise uh, linear function, is not very good uh, of course, uh, it's not differentiable in some points, so we don't have uh, our gradient, and also it's uh, not convex in general, so we don't have uh, ability like to calculate subgradient. Uh, in order to do at least something, we will take a look at some generalization of uh, subgradient. So uh, this uh, consists of two parts. Uh, the first part is called uh, B subdifferential. Uh, basically, we turn we have this point point x, 
uh, and we select when we take like all points uh, yj where like this uh, function is uh, differentiable and take a limit uh, find a limit to this point uh, later I will show you an example so it will be more or less uh, understandable and finally if we want to have what is called uh, Clark sub, sub differential uh, we have to take uh, convex hull uh, like of uh, these points so let's take a look at the function uh, of absolute value of x uh, it's obviously that this is piecewise linear function and uh, let's try to calculate uh, these uh, sub differentials first of all for every point in this like in this part if we try to calculate this uh, limit we will get like in this point we will get value minus one I think this is obvious second if we take a look at this part then uh, every like all limits uh, of this uh, gradient will be equal to will be equal to one in this point so finally we have two possible values of uh, gradient uh, of or like of limits of gradient uh, they form uh, a set which is uh, which is called uh, b sub differential this is just a set consists of two numbers minus one and one and finally if we want to get a clark sub differential we want to take a convex hull of these two points and in this case we will have uh, just line with like minus one one okay uh, okay now let's take a look at what we have here uh, it's possible to formulate somehow like to understand how this technique work if we try to understand what could be this sub differential uh, in the case of uh, uh, this piecewise uh, linear function uh, I uh, remind you that c, uh, that c, cx is differentiable uh, and f at fx is also uh, differentiable. So suppose uh, we are staying at the point x. In the point x we have uh, some active set uh, of uh, linear function. So suppose uh, few, so basically like few linear function like interse intersect in this point x. Uh, for this uh, act, for, for this function we have uh, the, like the set of uh, this affine function and in order like to calculate all posts so basically we have uh, m affine function and we have m ways like m different options to go into these points uh, with our with limits of our gradient so basically uh, we have uh, m gradients of uh, style like this and like we, we take a limit when we get basically uh, m vectors uh, and this after we take in like the convex hull of these m vectors we will get what is somehow like this Clark sub differential but the author decided that this is like too obvious and too easy and we assume that the, we don't have an access to like the true function f at x instead all we have is uh, approximation of this function and this approximation has like these properties uh, so they also give a link to uh, a quite like big book about uh, non-gradient optimization uh, where like there is a whole chapter about this kind of approximation they also have some results that uh, it's more or less possible to build this kind of approximation for good function uh, but uh, for now we assume that we don't have the access to this function for initial function f at x and instead we will use these guys and these guys are calculated like element wise so uh, one of the key idea in uh, these papers was like to build uh, things which is called uh, generator uh, set so suppose we have like at the point x k and uh, for this point we like uh, have like a generator consists at least of all active indices in this point uh, so but as I previously say we don't have an access like to true function so uh, instead of true function f at x we will we are going to use approximation uh, of uh, true function uh, so the, what we really want here we want to have that uh, all points which can like all indices 
which are from like active set in this point will be in our generation generation set in addition like in ideal world we want that if we take some ball around point xk and for every point in this ball we calculate uh, all active all active function in every like point in this ball and ideally we want that uh, uh, our generator will be the, like the subset of these points like in ideal world we want like to find all these possible options like all these possible active sets which are near uh, our current point in optimization unfortunately uh, it's uh, almost impossible to do like due to like heavy uh, computation so the authors propose to do the things uh, which give like a name a name to this algorithm basically the sampling we still have the fact that all active all active indices in point xk are subset of generation set in addition we have some discrete subset uh, y capital which is a part of this ball around point xk and for all these uh, y in capital y the vectors like this uh, these guys uh, are a part of this generation set which will be used like to approximate uh, what we want so the idea is like the following if we have this one then the then our like our generation set uh, has is a good approximation of true uh clark clark sub, -dif sub differential uh, but in practice uh, we don't have access to these uh, true things so we have to use uh this approximation based on uh, sampling and this is like why this algorithm was called manifold sampling Finally, um, assume that we have uh, this uh, set uh, JK, uh, GK, GK, and all vectors which are in this one, they form some kind of, we can form a, like a matrix, uh, consist of uh, some like uh, columns called GK. So what we are going to do? Uh, we want to find basically a projection of, uh, so there are little, so, we don't have like one gradient like one vector we have set of them and we want uh, to select somehow one of them and in order to do so we just uh, to find a projection of uh, current origin origin to this set uh, it's simple optimization problem we just like take uh, this this quadratic this quadratic optimization and finally this projection will be in the in this form So, after that, when we find our projection in this point xk, we build uh, a thing which is called a master model, which is basically uh, some kind of approximation of initial function. Uh, this will be like double approximation, because uh, first of all, uh, we don't have an access to true value uh, f capital. We only have approximation uh, m capital. And in addition, as you can see, we don't use all possible uh, uh, active function, all, all possible like linear affine function, we just uh, select, uh, which we have, select them only like the one from the generator. Uh, so in this case, so we build like this function and this function will be used uh, in the technique called uh, trust region optimization. Uh, so the idea behind trust region optimization is uh, pretty simple suppose we don't have uh, the true function we have just approximation and since we have just approximation we are not sure that we can go like anywhere uh, like uh, easy uh, all we can say that okay we believe that in this uh, small ball in this ball delta k we are almost we are somehow sure about this approximation so let's do a minimization only in this exact ball and again uh, another fact we don't have to uh, find the exact solution all we need is to find some uh, direction as sk, SK which improve uh, our result just a little bit just somehow in this case uh, there are some results that this will be like in this in this form 
uh, this guy is tell, basically telling us that uh, our gr like our gradient is not like so big, and we are trying to uh, like to take a look at this like direction which we calculated previously. And uh, this constant is from uh, the uh, condition on uh, second uh, derivative, like on, on, Gaussian, on Gaussian matrix, for our approximation. And um, the fun fact that uh, in this case we don't have to take a look at the whole, like in order to like to check uh, what we have here, we don't have, we don't like should check every possible. Uh, affine function in our piecewise uh, piece, uh, linear affine function. Uh, all we need is to find like some one exactly affine function hk which corresponds to some like uh, to some vectors in uh, our generation generator set which will be uh, formed like uh, this kind of solution like this kind of condition. And uh, happily, there is exact solution for these kind of things. So basically, um, if we have this generator set, we could calculate these things uh, more or less explicitly. Uh, I will don't go like into details about how this, uh, how like they got this formula formulas. Uh, these results you could find in the papers called uh, manifold sampling for non consignization of piecewise uh, linear composition. Uh, and uh, we just move forward. So, as I previously say, um, when we are doing uh, this trust region optimization, we don't want to like uh, we want to have our approximation more or less okay. So, suppose we have like our delta, like uh, this ball inside which we are doing optimization. But what if this uh, ball is is too big, and inside this uh, we have uh, some problems with. Uh, quality of this of, of approximation of true function. So in order like to check these things, uh, uh, when we calculate our candidate SK, we calculate these coefficients. This coefficient, this coefficient basically tell us uh, how good uh, our approximation, uh, how good is approximation of true function uh, compared with approxim compared with uh, so sorry. So so we have we have uh, some sort of true function uh, f of x. For this true function, we calculate this value. Please note that we don't calculate derivative, only values. Uh, and also for this sk, we calculate the value of our approximation. And if, uh, for example, we have very good increase, we have very good increasing in approximation, but very bad increasing uh, in our target function, it seems that we have problems that this point is not okay, and we should like go back and uh, decrease the size like of trust region and like uh, repeat uh, what we done what we do previously. Uh, and if this value is uh, big enough, and big enough is defined like uh, as meta parameter of this algorithm, we accept this new point S K. So technically, we have some kind of algorithm which could be used in order like to optimize in order to optimize this. Uh, uh, function uh, it consists of piecewise linear functions. So uh, let's take a look at streamed estimation. So the idea is pretty simple. Suppose we have some data set consists of uh, n capital points, and we have some loss function which is calculated uh, how which which like uh, punished us if we have some big mistake in predicting uh, y. Uh, and we have our model which is parameterized which is parameterized by this vector uh, w. So uh, what we're going to do, we want to calculate these kind of things. So what we do, we calculate loss for every point in our data set. After that, we take q, small, q smallest uh, losses value and get rid of others and use uh, only values which are like this one. The idea is, pretty, the idea is uh, something like this. If we have some outlier, this outlier will always have very like big value, like very big um, loss, and we don't want to use this outlier uh, to punish our like our like our model. Uh, so this is why uh, one of the ideas like to calculate uh, all losses, uh, get rid of uh, the biggest one, and find the sum of all other all others. 
So in general, we like uh, have to show that show that this function is uh, a, like a uh, special case of the previous one. So previously we were working with uh, this function. So <clears throat> obviously, uh, psi w will be equal to zero. Uh, f at uh, f from uh, w will be equal like to this kind of factor. We just calculate the loss uh, with these parameters for every possible point. So this is like uh, n capital dimensional vector. Uh, and the tricky part is will be for this function. So this function will be uh, a set of linear function and this linear fu function will have like certain form. Uh, so uh, element wise uh, they have so every element of this of this linear function will be either zero either i di uh, one divided by q where q is like the size of quant like the number of quantile that we select uh, in our data set uh, and for like in order like, to define uh, which values we are going to take we select like this uh, so basically this is uh, some sort of um, active set uh, generalization for this kind of problem. Uh, it can it contain information uh, about indices uh, which are corresponds to the like to, so these indices are corresponds to, to the elements of uh, initial data set which have loss value not too big and we can see them to use uh, in calculating our target function. So in general, we can basically just, okay, let's take uh, this function. We already have this uh, reparameterization and uh, let's just use it uh, as it is. Uh, but authors, like authors of this uh, paper propose some modification. Uh, so first of all, uh, as you remember, we have a step, then we calculate it when we use like this trust region optimization problem. Uh, they modified it a little bit. Uh, uh, in order like, to have uh, this kind of form. We still want so our, our um, vector not go far away from uh, our uh, trust region and we want like to have this optimization. Like we want like to like this to be as good as possible but don't go like too far away. Uh, and finally um, Previously, I was telling that we don't have to that, that we don't have to use the function f at x explicitly. We want to use some kind of approximation, and uh, if we're talking about approximation, we can also have like stochastic approximation. For example, uh, we don't have to calculate uh, this loss function for every uh, point we have. We can just select the subset of these points and calculate this for this exact subset. And when we do this, we basically get an approximation of a uh, true function. And so in this case, the authors also propose this crit criteria like for accepted points. Uh, and uh, finally, it will be look, look something like this. Uh, what we're going to do, we are going to have a uh, few parameters. Um, this one telling uh, how, well, how mm, strong will be like decreasing the size of trust region. Uh, this one will uh, allow us like to decrease this trust region if we have some problems in finding good points. Uh, also, we have this data, data which uh, will be used like to accept or decline a uh, new point. Uh, some initial uh, parameter vector and also initial trust region. So what we are going to do, first of all, we are going to sample, sample some points from initial data set we are going to use this subsample in order to find uh, tau k and sk. Basically, we want like, to find this step. After that, we uh, get another subset of initial point and we will calculate this uh, rho k using this like new subset, like uh, the, uh, the new one. So it gives us like some robustness uh, and uh, so, and you can think about this as some kind of uh, validation uh, on holdout data set. Uh, after that, if we are succeeded, we just update uh, our uh, uh, vector 
and uh, also we decrease our trust region. So we want like to be as like so, so decrease like to be to be like uh, as small as possible after uh, iterations. We so 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 the, 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 so the idea is we want like to this algorithm to converge somewhere, and uh, if we will increase it, we will always have like will have like some new points probably, and uh, uh, so let's say uh, if we have good approximation of true value, we don't have this region to be very big. Um, Uh, so we, mm, as I probably say, it's easy like to visualize these kind of things, uh, and I'm not sure. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, suppose we start some somewhere here. We have like these kind of things, and we go somewhere over there, and we still have this kind of thing. We still like, go somewhere, but if we have like we're decreasing these kind of things, here it will be a little bit smaller. Here it will be even smaller, smaller, mm -hmm. and will be like some point where it will to be like oh, will converge there, like in some local uh, or minimum. So in general, when we are doing this trust region optimization, uh, from step to step, uh, we uh, decrease uh, like the size of this trust region. Uh, one moment. Yes. Yes, but we're talking about uh, non consecutive optimization and we don't have uh, always good situation. So yes, uh, these things I kind of missed. Sorry about this. Uh, and yes, the idea is uh, something like this. Mm, if we have this good optimization, so if we have like this good model, uh, which give us good approximation of initial function, uh, we can go a little bit bigger because, uh, okay, if in this region it's okay, then we can go like probably check a, a bigger region because we have better options like in selecting and better options uh, like in minimal values. But if we have problem in, like in this uh, okay, which is, means that our approximation is not very good, uh, then uh, we think, okay, this approximation, this problem is because like we have this better approximation. So let's decrease the size of our possible option and calculate our approximation in smaller reg uh, region. So we can increase and decrease? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Due to the <coughs> yes. So, and this is kind of like this. Uh, it was possible like, to keep only the last five slides, but I believe we will be they will be like a little bit useless uh, without this like background about uh, their techniques. Uh, so basically this like was pretty simple. Uh, we have uh, this special structure which utilizes uh, piecewise affine function in combination with some differentiable function. And in every point we have, we can find approximation, good, more or less good, we want to find more or less good approximation of these things called Clark differential. And in order to find this approximation, we want to sample few points around in order to like to find all possible options uh, in uh, limits which are used uh, in building a Clark uh, differential. So and after that, I basically just apply these techniques for a specific problem of trim decimation. <coughs> 